You're listening to Power Talks with Beth Ann and Melody Cedarstrom in the morning, where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth. And the truth with does set you free, by the way. And uh, we welcome you this morning to Power Talks. We welcome Melody Cedarstrom as well. Good morning, my partner, Melody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, you know what? Uh, Beth and I were talking prior to the program about what we're going to talk about today. It might be a good day for open mic. <laughs> open mic good Tuesday. Day open, <laughs> open mic Tuesday. Open well, mic Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> It, no, it's not because we weren't prepared. Why would you even think that? <laughs> I didn't say that. No, the listeners did. Oh. <laughs> the listeners I just said did. it might be a good day. <laughs> well, we've had so much, but it all seems to be on the same topic. And I don't know about everybody else, but I'm sick and tired of that topic because I think it's hiding what's really happening. You know, I watched I watched late last night because somebody in the house was watching football. So I didn't get my news till really, really late. And um, it was all the same thing. It was all the same thing. It's all about Manafort. It's all about Clintons. It's all about the Clinton cash. Not that those aren't important. I think we need to get to the bottom of it. But how much are we going to spend on more indictments and more special counsels? And you know, it's like, just arrest these people already. You know, it's just... Don't we have prosecutors? Why do we have to have special ones? I guess I'm, I don't know. Well, You're you not know, answering me. <laughs> you know, you know it, 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 if, if they went after all of the elites and the lobbyists in the same manner that they have gone after this group, you know, then maybe Washington would be a little bit better place. You know, <laughs> throw them all in jail. You know, indict them all because I'm well, sure I think there's I, I, more than just uh, Manafort and his buddy. That uh, you know, I think there's more than just uh, those two that have done the same thing that they have done, and Thank certainly God. you know billionaires who hide money offshore and 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 money laundering and all that kind of stuff. You know, this is this is all about. Uh, um, you know, bringing down this administration. And uh, you can't, you know, I don't know how anybody can deny that. You know, some are, you know, shocked at it or appalled at it, and others are, you know, clapping for it. But, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, um, Patrick Buchanan had a really good article, uh, and he talks about how they've been investigating this supposed collusion between Trump and campaign and, and Russia and so forth. And he says, you know, the other plot, yeah, you might be able to talk about, uh, you know, Manafort and, and, you know, bring down Donald Trump. He says the real indictment here is of the American political system. And uh, he says, really, and, and it is really good. He puts it all into, you listen to some of these news programs, mainstream media programs, and, you know, and, I mean, all this information is so, they bounce around. It's hard to put it in, you know, just a little logical order and so forth. Uh, and and Patrick Buchanan does that. And uh, he says the real indictment here, as I said, is of the American political system. And the true tragedy is the decline of the old republic. And uh, he just has a, a wonderful way and of... And it is. And, in fact, you, in the language that they use, you know that that's what they're after, all of them. It's not just... Um, it isn't just uh, the Democrat Party that we want to, you know, yell at all the time. Um, there's many of them that they never say the republic. Never do they call this a republic. They call it a democracy. Well, a democracy usually kills itself, and what do you see happening? And, you know, and, and so many of them are all about uh, the socialism. They all want socialist, you know, and uh, we are a republic. We have some democratic policies, but the setting up of the government is a republic where the people are to be the ones in charge. And honestly, we have to blame ourselves because we didn't stay in charge. You know, Ben Franklin said, it's a republic if you can keep it. And uh, we didn't keep it very well. No, we didn't. And, uh, I, and not only keeping it, I'm not so sure we're fighting for it now either. Um, so oh, That's true. You know, unfortunately. So, unfortunately. So um, it depends on how this plays out. 
Uh, we, he goes on and he talks about how why Americans just detest politics and, and hate the swamp um, that has been made of their capital city. And he says we're going to follow this story all the way to its inevitable end. And it's going to be months. It's going to be, you know, where this is going to be a daily, oh my gosh, of, you know, various news I, I, opinions. I, and I predict a lot of open mic days coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is tough, and I know the listeners understand that. It is tough to to listen to the same old the same old stories day in and day out. You know, uh, I want to say bless his heart. You know, Sean Hannity starts his show out with the same thing every night, <laughs> and it just you know, you know, and they always say breaking news. And what they got isn't breaking news. I think of breaking news as something that's happening right now. You know, it's out there and it's happening right. This stuff is old. This is going to be going on for a long time. We've been breaking this news forever. <laughs> it's like, it's breaking not news. news. The, Clintons, the, the cl- corrupt Clintons is not breaking news. <laughs> and you're right. Breaking news is something that's happening right now, and no one knows about it. It's like, oh, wow, this is new stuff. Oh, I don't know. And then, you know, what? There, unfortunately, there is a lot of things going on this week financially. We have the the tax cuts uh, Trump's pick to replace Janet Yellen. He begins his Asian uh, tour at the end of this week. So, I mean, there are a lot of things that are going on that's very important that uh, is certainly not even being discussed uh, because of uh, what is happening. And one thing I do believe, I do believe timing is everything. And there isn't anything that goes undone from the elite that isn't timed. Uh, there's a there's a reason that they, they came out on Monday and and there there's um, so it's it's very orchestrated it's, it's very planned uh, scripted and I do believe that so well know, I, I think it's a distraction I think they absolutely. did it because of everything else that was coming out um, I mean it's obvious that there has been some. Uh, well, beyond shady deals, even treasonous deals with this Uranium One, and and the mainstream media is barely touching it. But they got all juicy about this thing with Manafort, and that's four years old. It's four years old. It happened before President uh, Trump was even running for president. So it, it, it's a it's a diversion. That's what it is. It's a um, like uh, like in the Wizard of Oz and the. Uh, the man, don't don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. You know? Yeah, but the connections with the dossier, uh, uh, you know, and, and the, the payments, you know, f- you know how it developed and so forth. That isn't old news. I mean, that is sort of, you know, what no, has happened. No, yeah, I was talking about Manafort. Well, that, Manafort, that's, yes, yeah, yes, that's old news. I mean, uh, it's not something that's even related to what he was that Mueller was supposed to be. Uh, looking into because it uh, has nothing to do with Trump's campaign. This happened four years before that. This happened in 2011 through 2012. So they're just digging up whatever they can, and they threw the, they've held, they been holding on to this because they knew about this back in July. They knew about it before then, but they've had this information for some time, and, and they've just been hanging on to it. And it's and like I said, I, be, I believe personally, it's just a distraction. It is. It uh, is. Give give the mainstream media I mean, something else to talk about. <laughs> well, well, you know, and that's what they're, they're, they're gonna, you know, the mainstream media is going to try real hard to connect Trump to Manafort, you know, and all his shady dealings and everything like that. Now, I mean, if they came up with this information while invest, you know, while they were trying to, I mean, I'm just speculating here. I mean. Right. If Manaf- if they came across this Manafort stuff and they, you know, and he did do something, even though it's as old as it is, well, you know, you know, we believe in the rule of law. So if he, if they found something that he's dirty on, well, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But trying to bring down this and using it against the administration and using it in, uh, against Mr. Trump is something else. So you know. Well, it's obvious that they have done nothing but try to take him out Absolutely. since he was, well, even during the campaigns. But uh, uh, they, uh, 
they seriously didn't think he'd get elected. I think the last several months they knew that it was a great possibility, um, even though they were putting up these uh, polls that were saying this. And I don't believe the polls now. Um, I, I just... Uh, I don't believe those now. But anyway, they, they were putting up all that false information. You tell the people a, a lie long enough, they're going to believe part of it, if mm -hmm. not all of it. Absolutely. And that's what's been going on with this Russian collusion. Well, we don't have a smoking gun yet. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a smoking gun. But we got lots of smoke, but there's no fire. It's like that. And, it's, you know, they all say the same thing. So, you know, they've gotten together each morning to how are we going to address this today, you know. <laughs> and, you know, it really is amazing because, I, you know, and people might say, well, you know, you're maybe you weren't thinking, Melody, but I think, I think why do the, the elite hurt, hate Trump so much? Why? Well, why I you figured know? that out. <laughs> what's what's your... it, goes, it goes back to the money. What was it he ran on? It wasn't just the Democrats that hated him. It was all of the elite right. on the Republican side. And it just dawned on me one night. What is it that he campaigns for? Trade and immigration reform. Those things together, they are making money on. That's part of the dealing, the wheeling and the dealing that they have done. The elite and, well, all of them there. You know, there may be some that have not. But those that are getting rich... They're making money. They work together. The trade issues and the immigration issues are working together and making them money there in D.C. And that's why they hate him. He's about to get into their little cash there. And, and they're making big bucks. Not only that, who knows what these deals are that they've made. They may be fighting for their lives. <laughs> who knows what deals they've done? You know, Clinton may have put some deal down and somebody may be telling her, you know what, you didn't end up, you didn't hold your end of the bargain up, you know. And I still think somebody let her down and that's why she didn't get elected. She, she's trying to figure out, I bought and paid this, how come I'm not elected? You know, and that hasn't, she hasn't shut up since the election. You know, it's like, go away, please, just go away. I, uh, I agree with you because it, it uh, but I have another side. I agree okay. because money is important, yeah, but the, but they're already rich beyond their means. But that doesn't mean, and, and, and they have enough power. They they enjoy the power. They they enjoy the, the game. They enjoy the game of getting rich. You get to the point where when you have billions of dollars, it isn't even so much. You know how much more money do you need? It's the game. It's the power that they enjoy. However, Trump, I believe, is going to be a. People get mad at me for this. It's possible he could be a four-year term president, four-term pres, a four-year term president. Yeah. I don't think he's going to go for eight. And number one is age. Yes, he's healthy and everything. But that would take him up to seventy-eight years old after eight years. Uh, I think whatever he wants to accomplish, he can accomplish it in four years. And I think he chose Pence for reasons, you know. So I, I think there's a lot of reasons. I don't know. But, I mean, so the elite would, should look at it as a four-year term. Most of it, a lot of the things that he's done, he's done by executive order. They can all be reversed once they got their little guy on there. And they could say, well, you know, we got to put up with this guy for four years, you know, and then we can get back to business but, as usual. But not the federal appointees that he's been making in the court system. They, they can't undo that. That 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 part is true, but you know, uh, you know, There's I a lot think <laughs> I think what the elites are afraid of is I believe Trump. Well, people are just going to have to stay tuned because I hear music. And <laughs> oh, I'm going to finish that she's, statement. She's left us. <laughs> so I have you on the hook. So you know, we told them it was. Uh, told him it could be open mic and we never gave the number so i'm going to do that now 717-300-1218 that's 717-300-1218 melody has left us with a cliffhanger you don't want to miss it hear it first on firstamendmentradio.com and firstamendmentradio.net
Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org. C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicholas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Cancelled. The author exposes the Latin, Rapture Origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America, in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left-behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning, and uh, we have opened up the mics at seven one seven. 31218 We really don't ever have the mics turned off. We always have the mics open. But we're going to let you talk about whatever you want to talk about today. Um, however, Melody left us with a cliffhanger just before the break. So we're going to find out. I believe there's two possible reasons, and, and, I, and maybe three because I, I agree with what you said. I also believe that we're, they were they are planning on a collapse of this country. And I do believe we're close to that. And I believe with him being in there, even though it's four years, um, what, you know, and that's why I asked, why couldn't they wait four years and then complete their, their – and that's because he's messing up their plans for the, for, the, for the completion of the destruction of this country. Oh, I think that's true. I the, agree the, with that. The, the main reason I think they dislike him so and want him out of there is because he awoke – the people. I believe they are afraid of the people. I believe the elite are afraid of the people of this country. And oh, the, the people of this country has shown their voice. They've been heard. And they have, the people of this country have a very powerful voice. They're beginning to see the swamp. They're beginning to understand the swamp. They're beginning to see who these people are that they've been elected. Normally, they elect people and they don't even get involved. Well, people seem to be getting involved. Is it enough to change things? I don't know yet. But I believe that the elite are afraid of the people. And I think that is the power. Um, and I think that... Because, uh, you know, if they eliminate 
<clears throat> Trump. He he does have a, a unique way of getting people fired up, and if they remove Trump, what do you think? Most of the people in this country, they'll just go back to sleep, and uh, it'll be business as usual. So I think Maybe. that's what the elite... I think that's what the I have is afraid of. I have said for a long time that it isn't really Trump they hate. They hate that we the people elected him. They've done nothing but complain and bellyache about the Electoral College, um, which is there to uh, to make sure that uh, the minority is represented. Otherwise, the big cities would be calling the shots, and that's what they want. If you notice, the big cities usually go Democrat. Not always, but almost always they go Democrat in those big places. And uh, I have an article here where it's talking about, in fact, it's somebody from the Daily Signal. They've actually written, Tara Ross has written a book about um, the Electoral College. And she says, liberals claim the Electoral College is biased. And then she gives a few facts here. But, of course, she's written a book and wants you to, uh, to buy her book. And it's called The Indispensable Electoral College, How the Founders plan saves our country from mob rule and uh, um, that is exactly what the electoral college does now we have messed up because we've let the we've let allowed the elected people to mess with the constitution they like to call it a living breathing document but that's only so they can get away with changing it and that 17th amendment was a change that has put in place career politicians, and uh, that's where they no longer appoint the senators on the state level, but they elect them. So you can have somebody from Timbuktu move to another state by his or her um, Senate seat. And, and so that upset the apple cart. But if we get rid of the Electoral College like the Democrats and some of the others are wanting to do, we're done as a republic. We are absolutely finished. It'll be the final nail in the coffin for the republic. And like you said, T Donald Trump spoke to the working man. Um, now, he's a, a very wealthy man. He even started out wealthy. His dad was a builder. They made good money. and uh, But he has also worked on the job. And he made his kids work on the job. I like some of the stories, you know, with Don Jr. I guess he thought he was the rich kid. And his dad came in. Donald Trump says he asked him to get him a Coke. Well, this was Don Jr. telling the story. And he, Don Jr., you know, I'm not sure what age he was, 10 or 12 or 13. <laughs> he made some comment to his dad. And he said he never saw his dad move so fast. And he said he ran and he stopped it where his mom was, and his mom handed him over to his dad. <laughs> and he said, from that day on, I had to go to work with dad. So he spoke to the working man, even though he may not be uh, exactly like the the working, uh, forgotten American that's going to the factory every day. I don't know how many here listening have been factory workers. Uh, I worked in a factory when I was out of high school. And my dad worked for Owens Corning Fiberglass. So I'm a factory-raised kid. Uh, he quit Later on in life, he quit the the uh, factory and he started his own business. He was a piano tuner, and uh, he tuned pianos. And uh, but I think Trump spoke to the American people, and uh, that's how he got elected. And he has woke people up. People are awake. They're trying to pay attention, but they are absolutely, like you said earlier, sickened by politics. I have always hated politics, believe it or not, because I believe it's, um, it's a deception. They're up there making money off of the American people. They cannot think up enough ways to take your money, and they just spend, spend, spend. They've got this nation in a mess uh, financially, and I do believe that they are trying to bring this country down. Derry Brownfield used to say they have to bring America down to a third world country level because they can't bring the others up. So that's the redistribution of wealth. That is socialism, communism, whatever you want to call it. And that's what the globalists want. Everybody to be the same. And you know that never works. It never has worked. If you look at history, that didn't work. So they're tearing down the monuments 
that signify liberty. They're tearing down the monuments that show that American exceptionalism. Not that this country has always been good. We have our dark years, definitely have our dark times. But by golly, we're not the only country that had slaves. And some countries still have slaves. And that doesn't make slavery correct. It just makes it, that's how life was, and we're trying to do better. And we have done better. And I don't believe, I, I, you know, I don't always agree with Ben Stein. We're all slaves now, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. To, We're all to king government. Yeah. <laughs> to government, indeed. So, you know, I want restitution. Yeah. Hey, we yeah. do have a caller. We have Joe from That's Arkansas that. calling us this morning. Good morning, Joe's Joe. Joe's going to rescue us. Hey, Joe, how are you? Yeah. Oh, I'm staying warm enough to stay alive so far. And how are y'all? <laughs> oh, it is cold. It is cold. Yep, yep, it's getting to be that time of the year. I wanted to comment on something that Beth Ann said, and that's about how the swamp opposes Trump primarily on immigration and trade. And, of course, it's the big multinational corporations uh, that are behind that, so it's the money of the multinational corporations that want oh, the open borders so that they can get the cheap labor from other countries, and they want the free trade so that they can you know, manufacture stuff where the labor is cheapest and then sell it in the United States where they can get the highest price for it. You know, it's them that are opposing Trump on trade. And uh, one of the things I find disappointing about a lot of the conservative commentators on the radio is that they seem to think that corporations are wonderful, corporations can do no long, wrong, and the only thing that criticizes government. And what I find is that I don't think our founding fathers particularly trusted corporations either. You know, like there's a famous quote from Thomas Jefferson where he said that uh, if the American people ever allow private banks to control the money supply, then the banks and the corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their forefathers conquered. And so Thomas Jefferson didn't trust corporations that much. And uh, Abraham Lincoln also uh, said that uh, he saw an era of corruption where corporations would dominate uh, coming after the Civil War, and he thought this would be more dangerous to the republic than the, uh, you know, secession of the South actually was. And so... uh, so I, I don't I don't think the record of industry shows that our founding fathers and our really great presidents have gone along with this idea that corporations are absolutely wonderful, they're private business, they can do no wrong. And um, and I I once had a book by a farmer from Colorado that was called War Central Planning and Corporations. And what he said in there was, and of course, the reason they didn't trust corporations is because they wanted to avoid any concentration of power. You know, there's that old saying, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, if a corporation gets so big that it has so much money, you know, that it can be the size of a country or bigger, and, uh, you know, then, then what we see is that some of the corporations, the international corporations, have got so big that they, you know, some of them seem to be more powerful or they can corrupt and control the government by the power of their money. And so that's that's the problem in any cor- any concentration of power, whether it's government or whether it's money, you know, corporate power and so on, like banking power, whatever it is, you know, anytime there's such a concentration of power, you know, that, 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 that when it becomes corrupt, uh, it can really make a lot of, do a lot of damage to society. You know, that's, that's uh, I think, what our founding fathers saw and what a lot of the uh, patriotic people see, too. And uh, so, anyway, I was talking about this book by this Colorado farmer, and he said that he looked into the history of it, and he said that in the beginning of the country, uh, a corporate, uh, to have a corporation, to found a corporation, it was not so easy, and that you had to have a special con- act of Congress to create a corporation, and they would get, and you had to prove to Congress, you had to demonstrate to the satisfaction of Congress, which was the people's elected representatives, that your corporation was going to do the public good, that it was going to be in the public interest, and then they would give you a corporate charter that was good for 20 years, and at the end of 20 years, if you wanted to keep your corporation going, you had to go before Congress again and demonstrate that your corporation had served the public interest and the public good, and then they, uh, then if they wanted to, they they could renew the charter. And that's why Andrew Jackson was able to kill the Second Bank of the United States, you know, because the corporate charter of the Second Bank of the United States has come up for renewal, you know, 20 years after it was created in 1816. So in 1836, you know, Andrew Jackson was president. He was able to stop it from getting renewed. And uh, 
and then, as I understand it, the Rockefellers and other influential industrialists, corporate corporate people, got that changed after the Civil War. And so, uh, so, so the left wingers, you know, talk a lot against corporations, and I think they make some good points. Uh, but the thing is that they seem to always want some kind of regulation, which benefits the which um, regulation of the corporations, which. Um, you know, as so many people point out, tends to hurt small business more than it hurts the corporations. So, again, I see that um, it looks to me like our founding fathers, in other words, understood the situation a lot better than and had a lot better solution to the problem, you know, of the power of giant corporations uh, than the left-wingers do. So I wish the left-wingers would quit opposing the founders so much and uh, recognize their wisdom in seeing that our founding fathers saw all these problems that they complain about, but they have a lot better solutions to these problems than the left-wingers do. Mm. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, it's... Um you know, it's when you go back and you look, it's amazing the wisdom that the founding fathers had. But it was because they had lived what we're living now. There might have been a different, uh, uh, a different way. Granny, my grandmother used to say, "There's no new sins, just new ways of doing them." And uh, you know, the corporations didn't they come to be to uh, for uh, you incorporate because you gives you better tax breaks or whatever. And uh, it's. Uh, you're absolutely right, though. The corporations and the uh, D.C. occupiers occupying offices and cutting deals, um, that's the reason that the immigration and uh, the trade issues go hand in hand, and that's uh, how they're making their money. And I believe that's a big reason of why they hated Trump from the get-go. Plus, he just wasn't one of them. So I agree with you 100%. Uh, Joe, Melody? You know, I do too. I mean, you always follow Uh-oh. the dots. <laughs> you know, you always follow the dots and, and you always follow the money trail. And Absolutely. you can usually find out. Um, but we really haven't had any changes yet. You certainly, you know, you know, there was discussions. We, we pulled out of some trade agreements and so forth. I get all that. Um, I mean, the, the, the uh, one really didn't have any impact yet and so forth. So, I, you're right. We got to get these multinational corporations out of Washington. Um, but I mean, if you look at the, the if you look at the tax cuts, I mean, who are they supposed to benefit the most? The multinational corporations. You know, mm-hmm. there's discussions of him uh, of uh, the administration choosing. I mean, we don't know who. Trump is going to choose to replace Janet Yellen if he is going to replace her until he makes the statement because that's one thing I learned you know you can speculate all you want but you know he has a way of he has a way of surprising you of what he does but the top name is Jerome Powell he's tapped to be the next chairman of the Federal Reserve that's what you're hearing is being reported but and he will be the first former investment banker to hold the position so, again, we're right back to the same, you know, what is really being replaced. He's been a, a governor at the nation's central bank. He was nominated by Obama in 2012. At the time of his appointment, he was a visiting scholar at, the, at a Washington think tank. Uh, but much of his career had been investment banking and private equity. He's a Princeton graduate. He was a lawyer in New York before he joined the investment bank of Dillon Reed in 1984. He stayed there until he joined the Treasury Department in 1990. Uh, After he left the Treasury, he became a partner in 1997 at the Carlyle Group. It's a private equity and also a group of the elite. Uh, He left Carlyle, the Carlyle Group, in, in 2005. So Powell would not only be the first investment banker to head the Fed, but he'd also be the first individual who is not an economist to take the helm in more than 40 years. So, you know, again, it's like, you know, as much as we see things change, it's like things are still staying the same. I don't know who would be the best person to uh, replace Janet Yellen. You know, I don't know what options are there to choose. Um, so, you know, it's so, again, we have the bankers. We have the, still the multinational corporations. They get benefits from the tax cuts and so forth uh, for jobs. Yeah. And so, you know, we do need to remove these na- these multinational corporations. We need to get them out of Washington. You know, we, we need to get the lot. We need to eliminate the lobbyists. 
I mean, when you look at some of the things that Manafort did, he support he he was involved in a lot yeah. of presidential elections. Um, yes, you he know, was. He was involved in a lot of foreign elections and and was able to lobby hundreds of millions of dollars to go to some of these uh, elections and and countries. So, you know, and again, we have to be upset with the politicians that we have in Washington. You know, we need to get uh, businessmen out of out of the, the the Senate and out of the, uh, you know, so it's, um, so, and I get that we can't make all these changes all at once. I understand that. But or do we have enough time to get all these changes that we need to get done, or will we go back to business as usual? And, again, if we face some sort of financial collapse, which I can't believe we're not that far away, that changes everything. So, it certainly does. Joe, Joe still with? I think we don't have Joe anymore. Okay. Well, I, uh, you know, we can bat this around a long time, and I think my biggest fear is that the American people will, you know, where they're they're all paying attention right now, and they're all all in an uproar. Are they paying attention to the right things? First of all, I know that we want the swamp drained. Um, I believe that we're the only ones who can truly drain the swamp, and it's going to take some time. Now, yes, uh, the president and the uh, attorney general there ought to be doing their job to, to uh, clean that swamp out. I, I'm a little, I'm a lot disappointed in in Jeff Sessions, and I hope that there's more going on behind the scenes than we're aware of for for reasons um, that maybe they have to keep it quiet because the swamp is so thick. I would like to believe that, but I. My heart just kind of won't let me. I believe that um, the, there are so many of them are dirty up there in D.C. And I believe Clinton's got, she's got something on everybody. And, uh, you know, they're all afraid. I'm, I'm just I'm just throwing this out there because they all want to cater to what Clinton says. Even the elite on the Republican side um, they uh, they don't want to prosecute her. They don't want you know. They act like we've got two sets of rules going on here, and I think the American people are fed up with that. You know this this we should be you know there should be equal justice under the rule of law, and uh, there doesn't seem to be. And and I think the people are really getting fed up with that kind of stuff. People are frustrated. We're frustrated. Oh, yeah. We're frustrated yeah. because we don't see anything change and people you know contrary to what everybody believes just because we're getting record high stock markets doesn't mean that things are all well in america financially we have no. a caller we have bill from texas calling us this morning good oh, morning bill. bill good morning ladies i'm good moving morning, bill. south you'll have to excuse me can you hear me yes we I can. can okay good um uh melody is uh, frequently talks about insurance uh, as in gold and silver being your insurance for your savings account. Um, what a lot of people know very little about is FDIC, FSLIC, and NCUA insurance that we have for our banks, our, our, uh, our savings and loans, and our credit unions. And they all have one thing in common. They have res they have a resource account. The resource account is to be used to bail out any banks that get into trouble. And all three of their resource accounts have approximately one cent per dollar covered and or insured. Which means that if a bank goes down, the first one percent of people that apply for insurance are gonna get covered and the other ninety nine percent are gonna lose their money. Okay. Uh, he, Joe yesterday was talking about uh, self-sufficiency, but he didn't get onto the self-sufficiency that I consider the most important, and that is cash. If you go, if you, if your bank closes, basically it closes tight. Everything that's in there is in there, and if it's not in your pocket, it's never going to be in your pocket because FS all of those. Uh, numeral, you know, number uh, uh, alphabet agencies are going to, are not going to replace the money that disappeared out of your account because it's not there to replace. Okay, 
you, let's uh, go with the idea that instead of putting our money in the bank and then using plastic cards to take it out, like 70% of us do, instead of doing that, why don't you, when you, go, when you get a check, go to your bank and you leave as much money in the bank as you need to pay immediately outstanding bills, and you take the rest out in cash and you put it somewhere else where they can't find it and you don't have to access it. Uh, but the thing is, is that if it is under your control, it's not under their control. The vast majority also, another number where 70% comes in, 70% of the, of the, of the Federal Reserve notes that are issued circulate outside of the United States. And the people in those foreign countries that hoard all of that American currency, they live, they don't put it in the bank. They put it under their mattress. They put it in a book. They stick, they bury it under the ground somewhere. That's where most of our currency is. So if, all we have to do if we want to shut down the bankers is starve them out because they hardly have any any currency circulating at all. There's that maybe $50,000 in the average bank in currency. Okay. Everything else is done on plastic and with zeros and ones. So all you've got to do is make sure that you have your cash in your pocket or your box or wherever you keep it if you're not, and use the banks only as a transit mechanism to pay the bills that you want to pay with that account. If the money's not in the bank, they can't keep it when the bank closes. You know, I agree. I agree with you. You're, you're right about the FDIC and, and all the other accounts. I mean, they, they have nothing to pay. I mean, they're broke, just like every other government entity is. You know, every you know, even like the the flood insurance program, they had to borrow prior to Harvey. You know, we paid them. We you know we. So everything is broke, and I hear music, and we'll talk about this when we get back from the break. All right, you've been listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. And uh, we're heading into a break. The uh, line to call is 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. You better hurry because we're heading into the final segment of the show. We'll be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. 
We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned to listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. And uh, Melody wanted to go back to uh, what Bill was talking about. Um, and so we're going to kind of give her the mic. I agree with Bill about having cash. It is important to have cash. But how much cash do you keep? And, yes, you could keep enough cash in the bank to pay your monthly bills and so forth. And when clients ask me that question, how much cash do I need, I say multiply your monthly expenses by three um, and keep that amount of cash. That way you can pay your um, your bills when, when things, uh, you know, when you don't have access to cash. But if you store more than that and you put all your cash, eventually one day the cash is going to be reset. It loses value. So even though you're storing your cash under your mattress, and eventually, it, it, well, not eventually, but it loses its value on a daily basis. So your savings, you don't want to put your savings under your mattress. You want to put your savings into gold and silver. You know, your retirement accounts, what, you know, we know the government's going to mess with your 401s and your IRAs eventually. Yeah. We can't be sitting there with $20 trillion plus dollars in debt. And, and and have the same amount in 401ks and retirement accounts and then IRAs. You think they're not going to touch that? You think that they're not going to let you be they're on They're drooling tax? over it, they're people. Drooling they're drooling over, over it, man. It. <laughs> <laughs> they they are need so ready to take it. Government needs revenue. And, and they're going to go after anything that they can see that would create revenue and you're setting ducks if you're keeping your money in your retirement accounts and not getting it converted to gold and silver. That doesn't mean you have to convert all of it, but you should convert a large portion of it. So cash is great. And, you know, there's always talk that back during the Depression of 29, cash was king. But you know what? Cash was king, but cash was also gold. It was backed by gold until 33. So big difference. Um, between the cash then and the cash now. If our cash was backed by gold today, you bet I'd have it under the mattress. But look what they did. They confiscated it anyway. So in 33, so the government will do what they need to do to, um, to promote their agenda. So, yes, cash is good. Uh, again, my advice, three months of expenses. Keep in cash. Any more than ten thousand, people have a problem liquidating it. They just can't take it to the bank and convert it to a cashier's check because then all of a sudden the bank starts asking questions. So if you're looking for privacy, and how much privacy does cash give you? Well, anything over ten thousand, as I mentioned, is a problem. What gives you the most privacy? Gold. Hmm. So gold gives you a lot of benefits um, that cash does not so uh just do you know keep cash but uh, you know think about it have a plan and um, um organize it um what's suitable for each and every one of you uh, but the key thing is to get gold and silver to protect you against a a, a collapse of the system a reset of the currency and uh, we've certainly seen our purchasing power decline over the years since we've had a fiat currency. And uh, there's no reason to say why it wouldn't further until it goes to zero, which I don't think is that far away. So give the folks at Discount Gold and Silver a call at 1-800-375-4188. There's a little bit of pressure on gold and silver today. We've had it for the past couple weeks, so it's a great time to be adding to your portfolio to start purchasing gold and silver if you haven't already and make a plan. Um, just, you know, the markets are all up again today. 
I mean, there really is no reality in those markets. And so get some true reality, and that's gold and silver. Absolutely. And go to uh, dgscoins.com. She's got the uh, sign up for the newsletter there, dgscoins.com, and that's free. And she's got some good things in that this this week. It's a weekly, right? It's weekly. That every is Monday. Every Monday. Every Monday. So it's new yesterday. Uh, DGScoins.com and be sure to give them a call at 1-800-375-4188. I am so proud of myself. I don't have that written down. I have it memorized. That's it's pretty a good catchy for an old lady. It's a catchy number. <laughs> you... <laughs> it's taken me how many years to memorize? <laughs> uh, you know what? I have clients who call me that first started doing business with us back in the 90s. And they said, well, you know what? I didn't have to look up your number. I still remembered it. And uh, so that that's, that always warms my heart. Yeah, that's a... You know, it's... it's it uh, took me several years, so I, I can't wait. Well, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Good job, Beth. <laughs> I've, even, I've even got our call-in number memorized, so I think I'm doing pretty darn good. <laughs> I don't, so good for you. <laughs> yeah, I do write it down. I do write it down, but I didn't write down the the discount gold and silver number this morning because I was in a hurry, and I didn't get it written down, so I did. I and started. now you'll never forget it. Once memorized, <laughs> you'll never forget it. I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> there are days I just have those lapses, you know. <laughs> but you know what I was reading? I don't see a lot of um, people commenting on this. I, I saw It's on Fox News. Have you seen those commercials where this uh, person talks about impeaching Trump? I, can't, I just can't believe it. It's just is shocking to me. He, have you seen it? You watched Fox last night. Did they play? I it? watched Fox. I did not see a commercial to impeach him. There's some that are talking about how they're wanting to impeach him, and they're wanting you to get on board to help fight that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is I that mean, the one you're talking about? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. That's been going on for a long time. Well, these are uh, new commercials that uh, came out from some um, multimillionaire. He's willing to spend like $10 million in, in ads. I just started seeing them. I, I know there's a never Trumper. <laughs> I know there, there there's a group that have been doing this for a long time. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't have his name in front of me. But it's, it's amazing that you see it on Fox, Fox News. Okay, no, I'm talking about the ones that are that are fighting the impeachment. But you're talking about the ones that are for the impeachment. For th- he he's he's talking about uh, Trump. He, he, he is that the one that I was telling you about here last week that we talked about on the air. I'm not uh, he's a multimillionaire. He's a he's uh, going after Trump. And that what was it? They he was going to impeach him for uh, um, de- uh, obstruction of justice because he fired Comey. Uh, no, this didn't have it. Things. No, he talks about his his mental illness. He talks about uh, yeah. He's got all of that in there. He, yeah, he's got it yeah. all in there. Yeah, and it, it's, yeah. It's and I don't know who he is. It was Stevers or Stevers or or something, something like that. I've like never heard of him mm-hmm. before. I yeah. We talked about that on the air last week. Were you sleeping? I must have been. That was uh, that was a Breitbart commercial <laughs> that he was spending millions of dollars on these ads. But I am shocked that hey, you know, Fox needs money too. <laughs> Well, it's just shocking, you know, not shocking, but just surprising that uh, um, and it's on all the time. Yeah, I didn't see it. Hmm. I've seen the other ones, so um, I was kind of, because I was late last night, I recorded them, so I was fast-forwarding through commercials. <laughs> I was trying to get done in a hurry. Well, since, so. we, to- since we talked about it last week... <laughs> <laughs> But I did not see him on Fox, so I, I missed yeah. that. Yeah. But we did talk about it last week. It was a Breitbart commercial that I, uh, Breitbart article that I had talked about. Maybe I talked about it on that other show. Maybe. Maybe. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> Thanks for saving me. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it on CSC Talk Radio. Melody couldn't remember that one, so that's okay. Right. But I, I was thinking I mentioned it on both sets. But anyway, we didn't talk about it in extens- extensively, so you're, you're forgiven. Well, you know, there's something also, we're just about out of time. I don't know if this is fake news or not, but there's the reports of North Korea nuclear base collapse is killing at least 200 people amid fears of massive radioactive leak. This is by the sun. 
Uh, it's probably the same as the uh, Enquirer. I'm not quite sure, but uh, <laughs> um, but it's kind of interesting because he hasn't uh, done any more um, missile launches, and uh, but. Um, it was reported earlier this year that the mountain under which the base is believed to be hidden was at risk of collapsing and leaking radiation into the area. So, I don't know. It's kind of, kind of interesting uh, whether it's uh, fake news or not. I'm not quite sure. But uh, usually there's always some sort of truth even in fake news. But uh, Well, I'm assuming the reason he hasn't fired anything off is because China and them have kind of been trying to calm the man down a little bit encourage him to stop his foolishness. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, absolutely yeah. abroad this week. And uh, I just want to tell everybody, be in prayer for the president. Absolutely. Be in for his family. Not just this week, but all the time. But all this the week, time. traveling. Thank you, Melody. We will be back tomorrow morning with Power Talks and Melody and Beth Ann, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased. It has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.